Good day. My name is Ed McFerrin. I'm house counsel for Tax Deferred Exchange Services, which is the company that is providing you qualified intermediary services. Please don't hold it against me, but I'm, I'm an attorney. I'm house counsel for the law firm, and also we are qualified intermediaries for your tax deferred exchange. We welcome you as a customer. You're receiving a letter from us, probably electronically. It has an awful lot of information contained within it. It also has a very long contract attached to it. My goal today is to provide you some hopefully valuable information to go along with the beginning stages of your tax deferred exchange. We're going to include some varieties of information regarding who the players are. In the case of tax deferred exchanges, you are called the exchange or. We are called the qualified intermediary. You may have heard the term accommodator. You may have heard the term facilitator. We certainly called ourselves those names in days gone by, but the Internal Revenue Service decided to name us qualified intermediaries. We believe that we're the glue that holds your tax deferred exchange together. Together, we are going to act as tour guides for you as you complete maybe your first tax deferred exchange, maybe your 15th tax deferred exchange. But we will be advising you, we will be helping you, we will be assisting you in order to accomplish the overall goal of completing a tax deferred exchange. In that regard, there are many statutes out there that affect our relationship. One of the things that's of most importance is the contract where you hire us as qualified intermediary. Contained within that contract are a variety of details associated with that, but the contract is designed and drafted by us in order to comply with the myriad of rules associated with the Section 1031 Tax Deferred Exchange. The most important part, of course, is that the contract must be signed by you and must be in place before the closing of your what we call relinquished property. So, uh, another vocabulary term comes up, you're called the exchanger, we talked about that. We're called the qualified intermediary, we talked about that. The property that we're relinquishing, or in this case selling, is called the relinquished property. As we head on into your transaction, you may at this time have entered into a purchase and sale agreement for the relinquished property. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Many times we're retained and hired even before you relinquish property sells, which means a purchase and sale agreement, or in some cases the property will have already opened up escrow, and we'll talk about that during our time to gay as well. The contract for hiring us contains within it a variety of terms and conditions that comply with the IRS rules. It also includes our fee for providing those services. Our fee is specified in your contract there's no sales tax, interestingly enough, because as attorneys, the legislature here in Washington has decided not to charge sales tax, so you will not be taxed. The good news is you will also not have to be concerned at all regarding any costs associated with the transaction. Of course, you need not pay us in advance. You actually need not pay us afterwards. Our fees for providing qualified intermediary services are paid within the confines of the transaction. Think of us as the same thing as title or escrow fees or recording charges, those types of closing costs. We are also a bona fide, valuable, we hope, closing cost associated with your tax for exchange. This process of signing paperwork and returning to us will probably be handled to a great degree electronically. In days gone by, of course, we were interested in wet signatures, but with technological advances today, you will probably have been receiving this letter, this video link, the contract, probably in electronic fashion, probably emailed to you, and that can be returned by Authentisign or other types of electronic signature methods. We don't have to have wet signatures. However, if you are more comfortable with wet signatures, feel free to sign the documents. They can be returned to us by postal service, they can be returned to us by fax, or even delivered to our, to our office. Keep in mind our services are performed throughout the United States, so it doesn't really matter where your tax deferred exchange properties are located. Our location of our main office in Tacoma has no bearing whatsoever on the proper completion of your tax deferred exchange. What do you need to do now? Well, what you need to do now is read through the letter that's attached with your email. 
uh, read through the contract for qualified intermediary services, you'll find that it coincides with the timelines associated with a bona fide tax deferred exchange, and you need to sign that particular document and return it to our office in some type of electronic fashion. That's really all you need to do at the present time. If we have questions, keep in mind, we are here, as we said, as your tour guide, and we're here to answer your questions at any point in time during the transaction. In order to accomplish that, you can contact us by, by telephone, you can email our office, you can do a, a communication in a variety of fashions. We are here and available to serve you at all points in time during your tax for exchange. There may be issues that come up that we need to address, and we're happy to address those for your individual situation. As you go through the tax for exchange process, we'll probably be meeting each other during critical times of your tax for exchange. One of the times that we'll be chatting again is at the time that we prepare paperwork and you head on to the closing of that relinquished property that we talked about. Another time that we're going to talk in detail is after that relinquished property closes and you're in the dreaded time period of the 45-day declaration period. We'll also talk again at the closing of the replacement property or properties. And then again, we'll talk as we get close to the end of the transaction to give you some tips on how to file tax returns for your tax deferred exchange. So this is the beginning of a long trip through your tax deferred exchange process. You'll be receiving a variety of pieces of information from our office in writing. We also have a group of videos available on separate topics that may pop up in your overall tax deferred exchange. But again, all of these sources of information do not replace the help and assistance that our attorneys and staff can provide you during the course of your tax deferred exchange. This is just one tool that we have available for you to, again, act as tour guides for your tax deferred exchange. Good day.